I often wonder about the intelligence of species. The subject fascinates me. From bears, wolves, ravens, elephants, apes to dolphins, I've always wanted to interact with intelligent life other than human. As for the cat family of species, I'm still evaluating their intelligence from my own personal experience. There's a lot to measuring intelligence. Brain size, their language, ability to learn and remember, the use of tools, and even instincts come into play that can obscure measuring it. I got to witness some intelligence firsthand, a clicker-trained cheetah named Sahara. Michael was a staff member at Cheetah Experience and shared some of his knowledge about clicker training cheetahs with me. I was impressed by the kind of things you could teach a cheetah. So enjoy the following clip as Michael and Sahara go through their routine. Always try to get their attention first. Uh -huh. So just do a normal sit. Choose a sit. Uh -huh. Give them a reward. Uh, this is positive reinforcement. Check. Uh, and then always click when they do something down. Um, so this way. Uh, you can keep them busy. Just give them a small pinch on the back. Um, um, if you want to do anything like vaccination training, what I do is I normally grab her uh -huh. and just tuck on her a little bit, um, just so that she's used to the back of not having a needle pinch me or something like that. Now you want to initiate a, a well initial behavior, you wait till the animal actually does something, right? With yeah, you, as, soon as, as soon as they do or, or do the thing that you want to command, um, then you This, you can test the, uh, the pads, you can trim the claws. So I haven't clicked yet because I haven't, she still needs to wait for her enforcement. So I'm done touching it and then she can only get it. Yeah, very good. Yeah, so you give her a timer. Yeah. Stretch. Uh, so just squeezing the pads, touch the nails, click. Yeah, from what play you do. Okay. Something to just touch, touch. Notes, yeah. Um, you can use it with that. I'm going to use the, the um, um, just to get it to know what's going to happen. But your hands are tools as well. As soon as you work with uh, leopards or lions or tigers, you need to do it from the front. This is basically calling protective contact, right? right. So you prefer to have a barrier between you when you're doing the, uh, this kind of training? Yeah, so this is what we call uh, protective contact training. So this is, we, you can do this with the leopards, uh, lions as well. Um, it's just a lot more easier. Down. This way. Nice pinch on the back side. You can do with that. So as soon as they get a click, they know they're getting rewarded. Reward, yeah. So how many commands does uh, Sahara know? She knows quite a bit. She knows how to crawl as well. We'll do that now. Uh-uh. Leave the wire. So when do you associate the click and then you add, add actually a command, a, a verbal command? Especially 
The crawling is what we, especially when you're doing it in a crush. If you want them to get into a crush, but they can't really, they, so crawling is a way to distract them, following a command and just moving them forward into a crush. That's what the whole crawling is for. You said crush, I'm not familiar with that term. Crush second. is basically, um, as it in the camp where Savannah is, that uh, great um, barrier thing. So it's got two spawning gates where you can pin them into. No, no, no. Not that kind of crush. This kind of crush. Flipped up and go in. There, you're a cheetah. Animal crushes or squeezes have been used for centuries. It's a safe way of examining and treating a wild animal without the use of sedation. Ah, let's talk about right the crush. Okay, where it just slides into and it, where you need to use. Uh, Vaccinations, Vaccinations whatnot. Yeah. Okay, so that's useful. Yeah. Um, if you want to come on. Down. Pinch in the back. Down. Pinch in the back. Good girl. Good reinforcement, yeah. So, right there with that, I could have distracted her here. Someone could stick their hand through. If you pinch her with a. Um, Vaccination, quick in, quick out. That means less stress to the animal and there's no darting. Yes, that's, that's that's advantage I see in it. It's huge. Yeah. No dangerous uh, sedations. And yeah. You got an animal you can work with. If you, if you go on YouTube, there's um, if you look at um, clicker training or target training or uh, vaccination training or anything like that, you will see that they do it with lines. Where they have a little gate with this flip open and they use a command tail to swing the tail. As soon as the tail comes out, um, someone keeps distracted the line on that side. They take a blood sample from this side with the line being calm and easy without darting it. Um, right through the tail, huh? Yeah. Okay, go. Now, what is it when you uh, associate actually a verbal command versus a clicker command when you because because uh, you need to order them to get something. So, if I say sit to her, sit, I normally do with a hand like this, so she knows that this means sit at all times. Um, I'm going to show you, I mean, uh, taking control of the situation. Just a, uh, that's exactly what it is. Just a hand command. And then just a, uh, a treat to the bridge, yes. So okay. you can do training inside here with it, but the training inside here is only beneficial for The training carry inside is the, you can station all them, and you can literally just, Get up to this one, um, and the music moves like up. Up right. As soon as she comes up, you click a foot, and then you, you, you can move That's away, and you can just go. There's one more in there. Then you just. Up. Up. Yeah. If you don't, don't want to use a, a click, you can always use the word good. A what? Good. Oh, the word good. Good. Okay, the, the verbal command, yeah, okay, yeah. Like, okay. Now, so you, um, yeah, a lot of places, especially if you want to do a lot of things before coming to a click, different, uh, like what I did with the touch, like touch good, touch good, touch click, then she knows she what the good means, yes, I'm doing good, I'm doing something yeah. that I need to do, and I'm doing it what they asked me to do. So you always start with the clicks with the with you know no verbal command just the clicks to, to reward. The, the uh, thing is with clicks a lot of cats are scared of the kick. Ah uh, yeah, yeah, the noise yeah. Yeah. So in in beginning to get them used to it, it's yeah I, I normally hold the clicker behind me because it's a little bit softer. Yeah right. And then I'll sense. gradually bring it to the front where it's more louder. Yeah right right. Yeah, yeah. So I guess I was, what I was asking was okay you got you got a response you click and you reward when is it when you actually give a verbal command to the instruction versus the click and then like say if you want the animal the, the training part like okay I want I want an animal that doesn't know how to sit sit okay you've got the clicker training you, it sits automatically and you reward it when do you say when do you give the command sit versus the click to reward 
the clique is when they're rewarding this coming. The command is what you expect from them. So what would you do first? You would you wouldn't say. Well, I, would, I would command first. Verbally, like sit. Okay. Verbally uh -huh. and then click to give the reward. Once they're done, you click and yeah. then, okay. I see. So they're, they're thinking about the word sit, they've heard. So they, they, they're doing what you do. Uh, uh, seven is, if I ask you to sit, I'll give it a couple of seconds, move mm. away from where we've been, yeah. move away, get her in a new position, and sit. If she sits in, click, give it to her. Some cats, they, uh, especially if there's a lot of distraction around them, um, you know, they'll you'll, you'll tell them to sit and they'll, they'll look around and not really focusing on you. Take them away, get the focus back on you, and then do it. As soon as you get, you, know, you pinch them and they move quickly, you know, the needle can, can scratch them inside or can break down. Oh yeah, right, you want them to remain. So you want them to do it perfectly, um, so that they, you think, that you feel comfortable, uh -huh. that you think the cat will be uh -huh. with it. Like, as you saw, I, I pinched the heart, right, I yeah. and I squeeze. Um, I, I don't know very much long nails, but I, you know, with a nail, yeah, right, you can make it hurt. can imitate that, right, that, that feel, that pain, yeah. Um, I mean, no, if we could have easily done a, a vaccination on without it. Um, if we, if we have to come and do um, any sort of, uh, yeah, um, any sort of uh, blood samples, blood tests, or anything, I could have easily just distracted you with touch, 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 and someone can easily just take a tail with me and just take a sample. Because she's, she's focused on me now. So, right. um, in the past, when I did it before, did do any um, blood samples or anything, if I know that cat's not going to go sit by the fence to do it, I'll come in, I'll get the cat distraction on me, he know, she will know that I've got the treats, and she'll, she'll listen to me, focus on when the people can come, they can do whatever they want in the back, she's not going to be bothered with it at all. Um, the opening of the mouth um, can be difficult at some cats, especially if you do protective contact training. You want to make sure that they don't actually grab the face. Okay, right, because it could be getting grabbing you yeah, <laughs> if yeah, you're inside there. Off, the, the teeth can get stuck or anything. Oh, that's um, true, yeah, right. Trimming the claws, I mean, you know, we're stretching. The same as they've got a, a, a bad pad, a, a pad on underneath and it's, yeah. you know, it can get quite difficult to walk. You can just pull them over, make them stretch. You can quickly super glue. Um, it's like the base for pads. This is a, oh, the pads, it's a, yeah. It's, a, it's got a natural, uh, a natural in there as well. And it sticks. <laughs> oh, yeah. A couple of times using super glues and cats. Now, where have you seen uh, claws go bad? I mean, do, I've seen a lot, a lot of them wear down because they run, they run a lot, but uh, normally they don't uh, trim nails here. What, what, would the, what would the reason for trimming a nail? Like if it's broken or something? Yeah. Pig training needs to be as short as possible. Yeah, I can do it about two times, three times a day, uh, but it needs to be short and sweet. Yeah, right. Um, you don't want to do it for a long period of time, because right. otherwise they can... You know, it's a lot to take in. Right, it's tension spans may not yeah, be there, yeah. And they can get confused, they can get worked up. Right. Um, you won't get, um, you won't get the behavior that you want. Right, the focus, yeah. Mm. Uh, your opinion, I, I've, I've been looking at these cats and uh, working with them for like two years now, just off and on. What is your, what's your um, opinion about intelligence between the cats? Like the cats here, the lions, tigers, leopards, cheetahs, where do you place a cheetah in, in the intelligence level? I wouldn't say they've got a very big, um, I don't think they're very intelligent. Um, they're built for speed mainly, right? They're just, uh, I mean, the head is fairly small. With a small head, you know, the nasal ca ca um, cavity is so enlarged that it's got an influence on the, the jaw structure, the canines. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the whole skull, if you look at the skull of a cheetah, it's very tiny. It is, yeah, I put um, my hands... So they've got a very it. small brain, but I'm not saying with a small brain they, they're stupid or anything. Right. But, um, you know, they, in general, they're not very intelligent animals. That's why... Well, I've heard that before from others. I was, I was curious about your opinion. I've heard that from other uh, people who have worked with them. And I've seen some intelligent things. Like, Ken I think Kenji's very bright. Right, she some is. can be... It's, I always say, you know, when people question me, like, do I work with animals? I'm like, yeah, I work with animals. I'm like, you're so happy that you don't work with people. I'm like, but each cat got their own personality. Each That's cat true. got their own way of doing it. Uh, Sahara, yeah. out of the cats that I trained for veterinary training, Sahara was the quickest to catch a wolf and actually perform the behaviors that I wanted. So in that way, I can say that she might be clever or more intelligent than others, or she was acceptable to do.
do the right behavior or right. get the hang of it easier than others. Um, but, you know, it's, they, like, they each got their own way of doing Yeah, that. on its, on its intelligence level, own behavior level, own personality. Yeah. I, I've seen, yeah, every, every animal, every cheetah has a personality. Unique. She's very smart. She knows exactly when. Yeah, to she's do very, very, very smart. But she can also be quite stubborn and be like a cheater. Now, I could turn her around and bring her the other way to inspect this side. Yeah, right. Um, the orally I can do when when, he, uh, when she stretches, you can just go and open a single open command. As soon as the mouth is open, you click. Ah, uh, right. When they stretch to catch yeah. them when they're stretching. That's usually yeah, the yawn. Yeah. Uh, in this type of environment, especially when you work with cats that are aggressive. You know that our parent read that you know you you have to dot to actually do certain things on them. Yeah, right. It's um, it's a lot more easier to click a train them from a protective side to a fence. Um, if you look at videos of um, of lions and things like that, it's just easier because uh, I mean you're not going to walk in with a lion and go stabbing <laughs> it with the uh, for vaccination or anything. You didn't come out worse. So in that way, it's less stress on the animals, less stress on the people. And in the day, the animal is going to get a positive reward from it. Right, right. Um, if it wants, you, to, do if it. It wants to, to do it. Yeah, you know, if 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 you were, if I constantly going to dart so hard to get uh, vaccinations or anything in there, you know, in the end of the day, the whole immune system is going to go down. Right. You know, it's 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 going to, you know, it's, it's bad for the immune system. Um, to do it that way, it's it's safer, it's easier, and in the, the day, it's all it's all beneficial for the animal's welfare. Uh, you know, you want to make an animal feel comfortable in, it, in its own space. Um, if I constantly poke an animal through the fence and stuff, he's not going to come close to the fence, he's not going to come close to me. But if I do it in such a way that the cat feels uh, comfortable with it, the cat feels that it's getting a positive thing from it, and I can do my job safely without putting stress on them, it's a stress-free life. I agree. So that's, I mean, uh, I know a lot of people aren't for clicker training or uh, you know anything like that. They want to do, they don't want to train animals or wild animals. But it's all the same. I mean, if you if you're gonna dart an animal, you're gonna kill its immune system. Right. But if you just do it through the fence by clicker training, it's safe for the animal. And there's less stress overall yeah. in the long run as well. Stress can kill animals. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And now she she did what she had it what she wanted to do, she's relaxed, we can come in, we can come spend time with her, yeah. she's fine, you know, there's no, there's no issues between us, there's no fear, uh, I could do more work with her, and uh, she's the peace. Very cool, man. thank you. Cheetahs may not be the cat geniuses of the world, but they don't have to be. Their entire functional design is to run. They do that so well that strategy rarely comes into play. Their mind and body is so adapted to run that there's little need for strategy. From personal observations, I'd place the cheetah below the big cats in intelligence. What attracts me about the cheetah is their social nature, temperament, emotions, and their affectionate disposition. Their non-aggressive nature is their most admirable trait and while they survive against stronger opponents, they run. Join my coalition and subscribe.